On this episode of Cigars and Sea Stories, Mike and Bennett are sitting to talk about post-holidays, like going to the dump, and specifically because I just I just went to the dump. Uh, I live out in the middle of, well, it depends on how you look at it. I live out in either the middle of nowhere or the middle of everywhere. Um, if you're a hunter, I live in the middle of everywhere. So I don't have trash service out here. And I take mm. all my trash to the dump. And um, I don't know where the fuck all these boxes came from. I mean, like, I get it. <laughs> right. <laughs> like the wrapping paper and the boxes and all of this other stuff. But it was funny, though, because I was over there and. Oh, my God. I mean, it was like going to the burn pit. It was there was. There was areas of Camp Ramadi, which used to be called Junction City, but you would you would drive around and it was just it was like old salvage dump areas. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just where we stripped everything out of these buildings and basically categorically piled shit up. Yeah. Um and it just immediately reminded me of that. And, uh, I mean, everything wasn't on fire, you know, like it wasn't yeah. full blown, like wag bag burn pit. Don't get me wrong, <clears throat> but oh my God. And of course, stunk to high heaven. Hmm. Oh, shit. I'm trying to remember what we did. Like I'm picturing in my mind, I'm trying to remember what we did in Bosnia up on the remote. On the relay site? No. Yeah. Trying to remember what we did. This is back in ninety nine. <laughs> what the hell we did with our trash? See, we always just burned it. Like on, on Hurricane Point we had just like an ongoing, never ending fire that right. continued to consume trash. Uh, which is so healthy. Yeah. Well, and one, um, of the, uh, one of my favorite stories was, and I think we told it once, but I'll share it again. We had these two guys that were in our uh, cat team, and we were out on post one AM, or ECP one, which is the northern ECP in Ramadi. And, uh, <laughs> and it was funny because, we had a little burn pit that was out there, and we all thought that it was just relatively small, you know, due to the entrance. We didn't realize how much ground space was down underneath of there. And it was it was one of those, like, just bubbling cauldrons where there was this massive fire that was going at the bottom. Ah, oh, shit, dude. And the hole had been kind of domed shut with bags of shit. Literally, it was just wag bags. Uh, so these two guys are out there like, oh man, we gotta shove this down in there. You know, which I guess is the correct thing. You know, like in order to feed the fire, like that would be the correct action. All right. But they took an engineer stake, punched a hole right through it, methane and everything else released and whoop. and I mean it rumbled a little bit when it took off and uh, it blew them back onto the ground with flaming shit all down the front of them nice and uh, you know, one of our one of our guys was like it's in my, the poop's in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> I might have yeah definitely coming out of that with like uh, with like fucking pink eye and uh. Oh my god! You gotta wear PPE, man. Dude, they Probably were they were flat the Kevlar. I know. That's the this other thing. It's crazy. <laughs> gotta wear goggles. Gotta wear goggles. Oh my god! 
Um, yeah, man, I'm trying to remember what the hell we did. I mean, I know we had like flush toilets and stuff like that up there, but with the trash, we may have burned it. Yeah. I don't remember. I I just don't remember like taking loads of loads of trash down the down the mountain or anything like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Now I'm trying to also remember what the hell we did uh, in Egypt. Huh? See, this is funny to me because it's like if we burnt it or not. I mean, we had again, we had flush toilets and stuff like that. Which I don't know. Did that shit go to a septic or did they just like pump that shit out over a cliff somewhere? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but uh, I mean, you got like eleven. You know, I, I well in Bosnia it was a whole platoon of dudes out on this uh, you know site. Um, that's a lot of shit. And a lot of piss and a lot of showers. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And in Egypt, out on the remote site, it's a squad of dudes. So still. I mean, we had water restrictions there. Um, but that was because of, you know, whatever the hell it was. Like, they would literally, we would have giant, we had giant water tanks. Like, water uh, towers on the remote sites in Egypt. All right. So you were allowed like two showers a week or some shit like that, or maybe, I don't even remember, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to remember what we did with the trash. Like did the first, like when, like when we did mail runs, maybe we loaded up the truck maybe and like went down. But I, and I made a ton of these mail runs or supply See, runs, funny to but I don't remember. I distinctly, this is, like you will leave zero trash behind. This is how you're going to get rid of it. This is what we're going right, to do. Right. Like we had See, like fucking me, trash. It was one of those things is I didn't, uh, I never dealt with it like directly that I can remember yeah. because it would always went to, you know, private schmuckatelli. Right. And well, I was never like... private schmuckatelli on either any of either, any of those deployments. Um, so I don't, I don't remember. Seeing post Christmas, like you know, wrapping uh, paper. Why? Yeah, why not just burn that? You know, and oh, right we now had, we yeah. can't do a burn because it's so dry. So right. all of that's going to the dump yeah, and stuff like that. You'll send the whole so. fucking. You'll send the whole goddamn woods up. Right. Exactly. So huh. all that's in the dump. I have to so get on like, Facebook and ask guys about that shit. Guys that I deployed with there. Well, and I remember, so if this was all leadership, everybody else made it a big deal, especially, okay, so in, in Ramadi, you went out to, we had porter shitters that were surrounded by HESCO barriers, but any other solid waste that was like food waste or coffee grounds, any of that other stuff that went into a trash bag then needed to go all the way down. To the burn pit, which was essentially behind the clearing barrels near our, you know, front gate. You just threw everything in there. Yeah. And uh, and it was a god awful, disgusting thing. And then, oh, fuck. And then all of your mail went behind your hooch. All of your boxes, everything else got burned out back. So if it was paper, it got burned. If it was food byproduct or waste burn pit and then you shit in the porter shitter so it was like we needed you know we had briefings on this shit kind of thing yeah and afghanistan was just different it was wag bags and burn pits and it sucked oh. man i never even wanted to pt because it was just it smelled so bad all yeah it's horrible so it's like fuck that i'd rather go hang out you know like the shrine this one area that we operated out of, it was awesome. We had a we had a wag bag shitter with a view. Like you could see across yeah. the whole Afghan countryside. Right. Just sitting there <sighs> hanging out. And uh it was great because we burned everything up there. Um, so you would you get going with like this massive, you know, fire on the edge of the hill and hires looking at you like you are 
you're blaring us out like they can't see anything from their position across our position to basically see if there's any distant enemy you know and so we would we would be having a bonfire Usually they so, wouldn't let us burn, you know, twilight hours, obviously. Or one anything. of the biggest memories that I have is just every time you got out of the shower. Oh, yeah. And walked out. So it was like, you know, like twice a week or whatever the fuck you were allowed. I don't remember. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this is in Bosnia and in Egypt. When you open the door to the, to the, like the trailer where they have the showers and the shitters. Mm hmm. It just smelt like a fucking petting zoo. <laughs> like you didn't, like you didn't know. <laughs> and, and a, and a, and a ill, uh, and a petting zoo that was not well, well taken care of. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I remember that in both countries distinctly. You walk out and it just smelled like shit and animals and just, this. You know, but then after an hour, you didn't smell anymore because you were used to it. You didn't blow out all the, you know, shit out of your nose yeah. and all that. But you, you know, you smell like dove soap or whatever the fuck you were using. And then you walked out and you were like, oh, fuck. You know, with like a little tinge of like burnt tire and. Right. You know, just, you know, fuck. <laughs> Damn. You know, horrible. Just smell like that. Disgusting. It was. Dude, just I gross. know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, man. I was. But, but you guys had those burn pits like not that far from you. No. So that shit, like, if you were downwind, dude, you're fucked. Yeah. And luckily, I never had to deal with that shit. Literally. I remember my buddy and I. You know how it is. You always have a battle buddy when you go to the head. Not the head, <clears throat> when you go to the, to like, shower, if you're so lucky. Um, so. Yeah, we, people are screaming into the mics, or into the fucking podcast right now, like, we ain't getting a fucking shower on deployment, right. you fucking pansy fucking bah, bah, bah. <laughs> Um, I've deployed with the army, so there you go. Well, and we had showers on the first tour. That work kind of, sort of, but I mean, kinda, like, kind of, sort of, yeah. I mean, and, and when I I use the term shower loosely, right? Um, on base on the big base camps where we were at, they were great. I, I'm not gonna lie. On the remote sites, just like in you know, it's the difference between a a, a fob and a outpost. Yeah. Hello, of course, on the outpost, it sucks. Absolutely. It fucking sucked. Well, see, you know, it's funny because so. <laughs> so my buddy and I were walking over there and it was kind of one of those fluke things. Like we had brought our change of clothes, of course, and everything else that we needed when we were going to walk back out of there. Um, But I remember we were just kind of like standing. He was in his shower stall. I was in my shower stall. And I was like, <laughs> I... You know, the water's off the whole nine yards. And he's like, are you going to get out? And I'm like, I don't know. I, just, I, don't, I don't know. Man. I don't know, man. Like, this is the last. Uh, I'm really fucking clean. <sighs> okay. So, you know, like, I'm all dried off, changed over the whole nine. We're walking back out. And the wind had changed and a sandstorm kicked up at the same time. And uh, it smelled like burning feces, and it was moon dust. And moon dust. Like we walked over there when you're caught in a <clears throat> sandstorm. You have, you know, normally when you're walking around in a sandstorm, you have goggles, and then you put a smog on or something like that. We run 550 cord out to the border shitters so that you could get around. Like this thing was blinding, and it smelled like shit. I walked out into a blinding, shit-smelling sandstorm. Literally a shit storm. It was, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, in technical terms, brownout conditions, meaning that there was so much sand and dust in the air that you couldn't Code see brown. Foot. Right, but Code it brown. Also, but it smelled like turd, like you were inside of a fart. 
is what it's not. Oh, it was awful. Man. It was awful. And I just took a shower. Like God's fart. You're just like, you're like, fuck this. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's no other way to put it. Yeah, dude. And I, of course, pulled my cover off my head and put it over top of my face, knowing full well that I was going to get turd sand in my fucking hair. What little I had. No, no, no. I shaved it back then. So I was good. Yeah. It, dude, it sucked so bad. It was so bad. And then we walked into the fuel farm. We didn't know where we were going. And there's just a giant gravel, you know, pit, essentially. It was blowing mm-hmm. us from the right side. So it blew us off course to the left. And we walked literally into, like, the fuel farm tanks, the machine out there. And, I mean, visibility was like a foot and a half in this giant turd-smelling sandstorm. And it was just the burn pit was over by the gate near the end hooch or whatever. I think maybe it was, maybe it was a hundred yard, maybe a hundred yards away tops from the last hooch. Um, and hurricane point wasn't a very big, I mean, it was like hurricane point wasn't really a fob, but it wasn't really an outpost. It was like, you know, it was a big ass patrol base that we worked out of. Anyway, yeah, a fart-smelling sandstorm that blew me off course immediately following the shower. It sucked. That sucked. <clears throat> that sucked. Dude. That was around... That might have been around this time of year. Like, right around... Right after Christmas. Because, yeah. We brought in some plumbers who knew how to get the old Iraqi barrack showers working. <laughs> So we all lined up for that. Well, because the shower in our hooch, I mean, you were kind of like testing the fates. You know, that thing would electrocute the fuck out of you. Um, It was pretty temperamental. There was a live wire that was in and around there, and we tried like crazy uh, to divert it. But then we wouldn't have power through this one area of the hooch. It was kind of a fucked up scenario. Um, So, yeah. Every once in a while, you get a you know a little bit of a shock. It's no big whoop. <laughs> Nobody died. Good. You know we're good, right? Ah. Bah. That so poopy sandstorm. The, I'm thinking about it. I'm just thinking. What's about the dump it. like where you're where you're at? So like where you're taking your trash. Uh where you live? Are you like taking it to a transfer station? Are you taking it straight to the to the dump? You know what I mean? Yeah, so I uh, pretty much live like just way out there. So it's yeah. I'm taking it. I mean, I guess it is a transfer station now that I think about it because there's an area of it that is quote unquote the dump, but there's another area where they shovel all of the refuse goes into trucks and then trucks yeah. and then they go out and dump yeah. those. Yeah, man. Those operations are hardcore. Like you, we're filthy fucking animals. Yeah. Oh yeah. Human, human yeah. Beings. Nobody, nobody so, is free of that. No one. See, that's something else that nobody thinks about abroad. Um, like we have a dump, right? Um, yeah. or we have, if you live in a municipality that has trash pickup. Or, you know, trash pickup is offered as an added service that you pay for, you know, like 50 bucks a month or whatever, right? Yeah. Then, you know, you throw all your stuff in trash cans, put it out by the side of the road on whatever day it's designated, and people haul that shit away. Well, I can tell you in a lot of countries uh, throughout the world that I've been to, (laughs) they don't have that. No. Um, and there's a lot of trash just like, it's like they might have a collection point for the community. Um, <laughs> right. right. Like, Which is like, like a an pile abandoned, in a fucking yeah, it's like an abandoned lot, you know? Oh God. Uh, yeah. You know shit what I'm saying? Shit in that corner. Yeah. Right. Right. So it's literally, there's trash bags and shit. There's fucking dogs everywhere Ugh. and like people fucking, Oh my! Like really, you know, poor people fucking sifting through the 
<laughs> the bags of shit. Um, and you know, so that's, that's most places when society breaks down, especially you got no trash collection points. They don't have this. So of, of course their their place. It's going to smell. Right. Cause it smells like trash and shit and Ugh. waste dumped right into the fucking street. See like that. You literally are describing Ramadi. Ramadi yeah, no, I know. was I, a dump. It was or, a dump. Or you still have like horse-drawn carts where the horses are shitting on the street and they just leave it. Yep. It's not like, like the Amish. Like they have a bag behind the horse. You know what I'm saying? Do they really? They do up here at least. You know, who knows what, you know, different... I have a damn places, but they have like this like sack that like is suspended behind the horse's ass. Honey, got a Christmas gift idea. <laughs> so we're if getting, shit, we're getting a shit sack, a shit sack for the horse. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So it falls we're burning into our it feces falls into that. From now on. You know what I mean? So, but you know, we take that shit for granted because that shit costs a lot of money to deal with. Oh yeah. So municipalities, man, you look at it and those those freaking uh like spiked wheeled backhoes or whatever the hell, uh like bulldozers. Oh yeah. That have the metal wheels with the huge spikes as tires. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that like uh that like just push the shit around and then they you know, then they cover it up and then they add another layer of stuff and then they cover it with more dirt. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> and then they insert all the methane release pipes and stuff. Now, some places are actually capturing that methane and using it to create energy. So that's fantastic. You know? or, or, or municipalities. Some municipalities have done – the problem is is with the EPA regulations and stuff, with a lot of the municipalities used to have uh, you know, trash to ash type stuff where they would burn – they would burn the – the trash to create energy. Right. Yeah. And a lot of, you know, with EPA regulations now, they have to have so many different scrubbers on their stacks to cra- capture either carbon or methane or whatever. It's not cost effective anymore to do it. Yeah. So, um, but you know, so that, that makes like, a lot of yeah. sense. Right. You know, it, it, yeah. Or absolutely. figure out a way, or find a, or find a, a actual furnace that burns in such a way that it destroys everything. You know what I mean? Um, either it's a long, long gen, you know, a long duration like, burn, oh. or it burns so hot that it just like burns everything up. Let's say we shove all of our refuse into a giant <clears throat> active volcano. You know, right. or like that. Have you ever seen that uh, the Devil's Hole or whatever, where it's just a hole of lava, and I guess spiders right. are attracted to it. I mean, it seems Oof. really creepy. Really um, creepy. But we could shove all of our trash in there and see what happens. Right. You know, or we could we could like, you know, <laughs> we could like flame it up real good and condense it into bricks of carbon and smash it all the way down into diamonds. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just thinking outside of the box. You know what I mean? I mean, like, we could. Because we create so much fucking trash. Oh, yeah. As a society, it's unbelievable. And, like, you can try to recycle what you want or what you can. You know what I mean? Right. What you can, but it's like, dude, so much trash. Like, it's insane. I, I, uh, God. And it's not from a hippie perspective. It's just, it's like, wow. Like, you really think about it when you're in an environment where you've got uh, to to tie up a bag when you're done shitting in it. Like, yeah, every like, one of your well, dumps when, when is you have in to a deal bag. with your own refuse. Right. When you have to deal, when you actually have to deal with it, meaning you either have to go burn it or you have to, you can't just flush it away. Right. Because that's what our society does we just flush shit away and all of it you know 
Right, which is totally cool. That's what I'm. I'm a fan of that. I want yeah, to I am that. too, and yeah, I oh want yeah. that to continue. But yeah, oh yeah. But again, it 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 kind of like you look at especially like packaging, dude. Wow, the amount of trash that just like commercial oh, like enterprise yeah yeah or or like just like junk mail or um See, but that can be burned yeah, yeah but you know what i'm saying just yeah. the fact that you have to deal with it like my brother-in-law he he's a photographer so he gets all these frames and just i don't know like five ten packages a day delivered to the house right mm-hmm. and so his cardboard footprint <laughs> just from boxes from sh- the shit that's been shipped to oh, him yeah. is like triple the normal family, if not more than that. I mean, it's, it's insanity, right? Yeah. Um, Does and that's just go one to the person. Dump? No, because we have municipal pickup. Nice. So do the kids play with the boxes? Um, if they're big enough. Yeah. See, that's what we used to do. My old man he used to get a bunch of boxes because he was a pacer rep. So he would get those well built, well constructed boxes with, you know. Yeah, uh, like a good refrigerator box or like a, uh, um, like what, like a, uh, like washer or dryer would come in. Oh, no, Big no, no. Ass. These, these are like, uh, they were like the size of an, a Nintendo gaming system. They were like small, okay. Because they were pacer, they were like pacemakers oh, and leads gotcha. and other gotcha, stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, so yeah. what we would do is those would, you know, he'd take out his stuff and then we'd add it to the pile. And we had hundreds of these things, and we would just build stuff out of them. Like we would use them as bricks and stack them all up and stuff like that, and jump into them. And you couldn't wow. pile them up and jump into them. That would hurt like hell. But um, we tried it. So you could build stuff out of them, though, and you could create, like, really cool forts. And we would, yeah, it's pretty neat. That's awesome. So, but I like taking the big-ass washing machine boxes and cutting those out with the kids and little doors and play sets. And we built a rocket ship one time, shit like that. Yeah, buddy. And then we took all that shit to the dump. Mm. The <laughs> dump. <laughs> Fuck. Yep. Dude, I'm telling see, you. Yeah, well, one of the cool things that we have where I live is because uh, I live in the one of the most liberal states in the nation. They're, you know, I'm, I'm not, it, see, I say that. I shouldn't even said that. Um, but they're really big in. You know, we have a lot of recycling stuff going on in our county, you know. So one of the cool things about where where they have a really big recycling program, but for the, the county actually has a composting program. And most places actually have this. A lot of counties do mm-hmm. um, where there's they'll like pick up all the Christmas trees at the end of the season. Yeah. And or all the leaves that you like push out to the side of the road. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, At least in town. And then they pick them all up. All the yard waste and stuff. They do that like once a month. They pick up that shit. Like all the sticks and stuff like that that you've got. And then they take it back to um, an area and they make mulch out of it. Right. Yeah. So as a municipality, no, then you pay a fee and you can go pick up like all the mulch that you want for the whole season to like landscape with or garden with or whatever, you know, um, for like 10 bucks for the whole season or whatever. And instead of going to if you're doing landscaping, instead of buying, you know, 12 bags of mulch or having mulch delivered from some landscaping company. For like, you know, 300 bucks, right? you pay 10 and you just go get it yourself, right? Nice. 
Yeah. So that's kind of cool. But they also do compost. Oh, nice. From food waste and, and other things like that, right? Um, <clears throat> so they make this real rich compost that you can use as, you know, in veg. So they make one that's like for vegetable gardens that's clean and certified. Like they test the microbes and all that stuff. But then they make one that's like for like flowers and stuff. So it's not necessarily food grade compost, I guess right. you would say. Um, cause sometimes, shit. yeah, some, sometimes there's stuff in there that you don't want, you know, that hasn't broken down yet or whatever. So that's a pretty cool program that they have where I live, um, where you're able to go get the actual compost and mulch and, um, drop off all your brush and stuff like that. If you have, if you don't want to wait for the town to come get it, you know, speaking of dumps, so just a cool Cool thing. Save some money, just a little sweat equity. That's not bad. No, Dude, not bad I, at all. I want to say, okay, so there was this one time where <laughs> you just kind of reminded me of something because there was a dude who was trying to grow corn. He was my spotter. Really good guy. Uh, but he was trying to grow corn out in front of our hooch. And he needed oh fertile soil. Right. And oh no. He went all over the place uh trying to get fertile soil. One of the places, if memory serves me correct, was over at our like where we threw all of our wag bags. Humanure. And humanure. <laughs> humanure. Yeah. Um I think he Blah! got some. I think That's horrible. I think he got some, and maybe there was a donation of sorts. <laughs> of sorts. Um, oh no! But I was like, "That's that's fucking gross." I would never. Yeah, but we'll we'll gladly eat horse shit. I'm not gonna gladly eat horse shit. Well, you know what I'm saying when when they when they put manure out on the fields. That's horse shit. That's cow shit. I know. It's not human shit. I mean, I shit. know. It's not a bad thing. It's just no, what I mean, soil but, is made of. Don't get me but wrong. But human, I don't know, man. There's something wrong about it's not composting fresh, your own shit. Right. It's like fresh chow hall turds. Like, don't, don't do. <laughs> right. Don't, don't do that. Don't. I don't want to recycle the chili mac, my friend. Well, and the other thing, too, is like the, the corn was not harvested when we left. Oh. So. <sighs> Right. Uh, so somebody unknowingly is probably. Oh man, corn. check this out. We got corn. That's basically full of my poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. If you haven't nah. already done so, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast now on iTunes, Stitcher, and Player FM. See, that's, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's human poop corn, but I mean, it's good. I guess still <laughs> it probably tastes good. It was, you don't it, know what fertilized like, it. Mm, that's sweet. That's sweet. Damn. Corn. That's the sweetest corn I've ever tasted. This guy had it literally just came out of my shit. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, literally. So, so now you need to make sure you take the corny shit that you just uh, shit and recycle it and grow some more corn. Uh, Motherfuckers. Oh shit! Literally. And that's what. Uh, <clears throat> so that's what taking all my holiday refuse to the dump reminded me of. <laughs> uh, corny shit <laughs> in <laughs> Afghanistan. There you go. Oh man. Yep. And on that note, we cue the music.